Greetings, everybody. Stephen Gray here, back after a bit of a hiatus, although you may not know that. <clears throat> um, uh, to do more interviews with leading influences, influencers in psychedelic and related fields, consciousness transformation and planetary transformation in general. That is the purpose primarily of these YouTube uh, in YouTube channel interviews, Stephen Gray Vision YouTube channel. Uh, these, by the way, are also available on uh, Spotify. It's through anchor.fm. That's A N C H O R.fm. And, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the audio version of it. So it's also available on Spotify and a few other related channels, Apple podcasts, I guess, and <laughs> things like that. Anyway, that's the purpose of these in general. And uh, today I'm very happy to have with me a very interesting gentleman who uh, I've had a couple of exchanges with in email and <clears throat> just met. Uh, this morning, um, shortly before this interview, uh, before we're starting the record button. And uh, hang on a second, folks. I just got a bit of a frog here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, and so um, uh, his name is uh, Keith Lowenstein. Uh, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Uh, uh, he's an MD, uh, a physician with more than 40 years experience teaching and practicing Kriya Yoga and over 35 years of clinical experience in integrative medicine, psychiatry, and nutrition. He's a board certified he is board certified in psychiatry, obesity medicine, and is a founding member of the American Board of Holistic and Integrative Medicine. He's also, a tra he's also trained in child psychiatry, medical acupuncture, and cranial osteopathy, somatic psychotherapy, and psychedelic psychotherapy. I'm interested to hear about that. Um, in addition, uh, Keith is currently completing his training at the All Faiths International Seminary and will be an ordained interfaith minister by the end of this summer. Keith learned Kriya Yoga from Sri Mahani Swami Ganesh Anand Giri Saraswati, known to I don't know, a fair number of people, <laughs> you may not know him, you watching or listening to this, as Ganesh Baba, uh, one of the great masters of Kriya Yoga. At the age of 22, Keith became Ganesh Baba's last main student and for five years studied, traveled, lived, and taught with the 87-year-old Kriya master. Uh, Dr. Lowenstein's Inner Traditions publication, Kriya Yoga for Self-Discovery, is the fulfillment of his promise to Ganesh Baba to spread the light of Kriya knowledge. So, uh, thank you for joining me, uh, Keith, and welcome. Richie, thank you. It is really... Um... A pleasure to be here, and uh, I think you're doing a wonderful thing with with your interviews and and the books you've written, um, shedding light on spirituality and and hopefully helping humans move well, ahead on an evolutionary path as well, thank opposed to as opposed to backwards. Yeah, no kidding. Um, right. So great. Well, let's get let's get into it. I know you have lots to say and lots to share and incredible background in Kriya Yoga and and many other things, actually. Um, I'm dying to hear you talk about Ganesh Baba, but maybe maybe I'll start by uh, since uh, you have this book called Kriya Yoga for Self-Discovery, uh, um, you know, for the uninitiated, as it were, which includes myself. Uh, I don't really know what Kriya Yoga is. Uh, I know a little bit about the overall philosophy of yoga, uh, meaning kind of like union or united or tied or whatever, you know, as a principle. Um, and I've practiced a little bit of uh, Hatha Yoga over the years, but I suspect uh, most people watching and listening to this or listening to this don't know what Kriya Yoga is, how it differs from other forms of yoga, and perhaps how what are the similarities. So can you talk a little bit about that to start us off? Uh, absolutely. I think, you know, first of all, Indo-Buddhist traditions in Asia have tremendous overlaps. And my, my understanding is you have some background in Tibetan Buddhism, which has many overlaps with Kriya, at least, you know, the, uh, the advanced meditation sides of it. Um, yoga uh, does mean union, a union of, union of um, uh, uh, body and mind to connect to our, our soul or, the, you know, the, uh, the absolute, the infinite, whatever, you know, you like to call it, 
uh, Ganesh Baba liked to refer to it as U3 um, for ultimate universal unity. Um, uh, he was mm -hmm. he was fond of that, and you know many people clearly um, refer to that um, essence that we can contact, um, you know, as God or um, as a focus of you know most most religions and spiritual practices. Um, yoga you can look at in really four four to five broad categories. Hatha yoga is what is typically taught in the West these days. It's what's on every street corner, and it's physically it's it's the physical aspects of yoga. Um, and there's various schools as to how they're taught, and it's all a little different. Ultimately, with yoga, you are looking to maintain your body in a reasonable um, uh, state of health, so you can move forward. The goal of yoga is really meditation and transcendence. And there are different schools of how to do that. So um, bhakti yoga, for example, is a devotional aspect of yoga. Um, karma yoga is more of a service type of focused yoga, like Mother Teresa. Um, yana yoga is, is more focused on obtaining knowledge, gnosis, or, or the ability to, to, to discern kind of the real from the unreal. Um, and then there's Raja Yoga, which is more focused on the physiology of meditation and has many overlaps with Tantra. Um, Kriya Yoga, you could look at as one particular lineage of Raja Yoga or yogic meditation. Mm -hmm. Yogic meditation has very many similarities. Um, these practices clearly survived in the Himalayas of India, uh, despite centuries of various invaders coming in and out and and they were able to keep it um, pretty clean but it's very clear that it made it uh, into into the west as well not just in the 60s which is when the 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 the, the real blending of what what we think of as east west differences began to meld a little bit but um the mystics of all of of all religions have great similarities of practices and in Kriya is the way Ganesh Baba formulated it and taught it is um, a, a kind of a bare bones focus on the essentials and you learn these basic practices and then you refine them and explore them and 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 make them your own and move into deep states of meditation but many of the practices are ubiquitous if you look at um, uh, uh, the, the, the Kabbalah, Christian mystics, um, Tibetan Buddhism, um, uh, the Sufis, all have many, 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 many overlaps with all the tech. There, you know, everyone's slightly different, but ultimately, if we can change our physiology to experience the infinite, and and that is really what Raja Yoga and Kriya Yoga is about. This particular lineage that Ganesh Baba was associated with is the same lineage that's described in the well-known book Autobiography of a Yogi that was written by Paramahansa Yogananda. Famous um, book. Famous book, right? And um, uh, and it is, um, you know, it is a wonderful read. Many people have read it for decades. Um, the first versions, I think, came out in the 40s. Um, mm. And um, so it's been around. It's been around a long time. But it is that lineage. And when he was, the story goes, when he was a child, he was he was very ill, and they thought that he was, you know, on on the way um, out of this world. And um, uh, Lahiri Mahasaya, who is where this lineage is traced back to, uh, uh, saw the procession and and intervened and, you know, held him and and helped him um, come back to you know, this world and proceed with his life. He subsequently had other t other teachers within the Kriya lineage. Um, <clears throat> that's probably more detail than, you know, you might be interested in today, but I, I, I go through that in the, in, the, um, uh, in the book. Ganesh Baba was um, uh, university educated, um, uh, went to um, Calcutta University, studied with 
many of the great teachers at the time. He spoke about interactions with Jung and Einstein and Bose, and he was uh, well, well versed in uh, physics and mathematics. He did uh, uh, work in business, um, uh, and his father even uh, was working for Gandhi at the time of his father's death, and Ganesh Baba was then left with the task of, um, I think he had eight sisters, and so that he then took care of and uh, made sure that they were all set before he renounced, right around somewhere in his 40s, and first became a Swami under Swami Shivananda, who trained many of the great yoga teachers who came to the West. Um, mm -hmm. And then Ganesh Baba became part of um, the Kriya Yoga line. He also worked for Nanda Maya Ma for 10 years, um, doing logistics and, and feeding thousands of people a day. And then he ended up being the head monk of a, of a, of a Shiva Akara. So his, his title, Sri Mahant, he was uh, head monk of a um, uh, ganja-focused um, you know, meditation practice. Um, and um, so he had the background of the very pure um, Kriya Yogic meditation, but also the influence of, of cannabis and, and the other, other psychedelics and how to utilize those with meditative practices. Kriya Yoga itself can be a very accelerated form of meditation. Um, I have had training from other Kriya Yoga masters as well um, uh, over the years. And um, Ganesh Baba's what, and everyone has, you know, their own flavor, and that 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 is uh, an important thing in 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 spiritual traditions. You know, you 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 learn things from different people, and they might give you a slightly different perspective, but the basics, the basics are all the same. <clears throat> One thing um, that clearly was st still going on in in in. Uh, um, the early 1980s when I met Ganesh Baba was there was still plenty of uh, movement from the hippies back in the 60s and 70s. So um, cannabis use was certainly around. Um, he never encouraged people to, to you know, take psychedelics or, or smoke um, cannabis, but if they mm. were, uh, uh, he would um, be quite firm with them that they had to do the basic practices of Kriya um, while while in those states and mm -hmm. he was he was quite a firm teacher I, I think he was um, I often describe him as um, uh, you know part marine sergeant <laughs> and 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 part Mary Poppins <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to ask you you know because of what you just mentioned about cannabis and other, quote other psychedelics, uh, but also because of the you know the the the, the focus of uh, the work that I do in general uh, involves the psychedelics and cannabis. With you know my book, for example, cannabis and spirituality. How do you see, or perhaps you know, what would Ganesh Baba say, or or how do you what would you say about why? cannabis or how cannabis can be a beneficial adjunct or inclusion in those kinds of practices how does that happen well you know so 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 transcendence uh, spiritual experience can happen to people um, all kinds of ways spontaneously um, uh, uh, particularly um, uh, ecstatic sexual experience um, uh, in nature um, uh, with with prayer and and meditation, um, but also with um, uh, various plants that have been used for millennia around the world to induce altered states of awareness um, that allow people to access subtler fields of energy, and that's probably the 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 you know the biggest um, uh, piece here that nature nature is really the grand psychedelic, and mm -hmm. um, and it is through our connection with nature, which includes our body, that we can then commune with spirit. So you can think of nature and spirit as our, our perception of duality, so to speak, and when, when, when you can bring them together, uh, when you can balance them just right, uh, like a breath so so when you get the inhale and the exhale so balanced that there's kind of a breathless state 
you then you then connect with the you know ultimate ultimate field or or um, uh, U three as Ganesh Baba liked to refer it to, to refer to it as, mm -hmm. and so having a so his four practices so so Kriya Yoga um, focuses utilizes um, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and and Kriya Yoga is referred to in, in, in there as well. And the first two parts of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras focus on yamas and niyamas, which are kind of inter and intrapersonal uh, behaviors and observances, so to speak. Then it moves to asanas or posture. Then it moves to pranayama, which is breath. Then it moves to pra praktihara, which is uh, um, uh, uh, focused concentration. And it moves on, then focusing more on abstract awareness. And then you first hit meditation, and then samadhi. So there's eight stages there. So um, with Kriya Yoga, Ganesh Baba always s said that the um, you know the personal changes would come with practice. So the first thing is you know, do some hatha yoga or whatever kind of exercise you need to you, you enjoy, um, tai chi, qigong. Um, calisthenics, what, whatever, whatever you enjoy, but become you know flexible and strong, uh, because for meditation you need to sit, and so yoga and hatha yoga ultimately was to maintain a a strong base so that your body is is strong and you can sit straight. And so posture, 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 is the first instruction in Ganesh Baba's Kriya Yoga. And he would admonish people who were hunched over in front of him, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, much to their dismay. So, um, uh, and of course, then then you move into 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 breath work. And you, pranayama is great. Pranayama is 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 uh, um, an Indian discipline of breathing exercises, all kinds, um, and it's often. It's often taught in a very structured and I would add almost rigid fashion for people. So there's a lot of counting in this way and that way. And in a way it misses the point and people don't get past that because mm. cause it's a creative process. Kriya Yoga is creative integration of the body, mind and spirit. And so yes, a few learning a few different pranayama exercises to help you re-educate your respiratory system so mm -hmm. that you're sitting straight and you're you're, you're you, you can re-engage with more of the natural rhythms and then you can focus on your breath. And then then that focus on your breath takes you to a whole nother level of 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 awareness because you're really working with the autonomic nor nervous system. And who's written wonderful things about this is is Stephen Porges with his polyvagal theory. In fact, Kriya Yoga has a very many, many, many very subtle techniques you do with the body that all influence the vagus to some degree. And it's fascinating to see the correlation um, uh, with that work. Um, the the third uh, exercise in in Kriya Yoga, the third practice is 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 learning about your third eye and 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 attention training there. Um, and then it's working with sound and vibration um, and using mantra <clears throat> or just the sound of your breath or listening to the sound of silence. Um, and once you have those four practices down and they occur automatically together, you move into very deep states of awareness rather quickly. You know, first there's deep states of relaxation lots of feelings of compassion and love can come up. We could talk more about that. Um, uh, and, and you then, you know, um, uh, you know, progress from there, but, but each of the practices is something you have to make your own and you move into micro modulations of the practices and you, and, and you play with them and how they work together, uh, in a synchronous fashion. So often in, um, uh, uh, Eastern writings and some Western spiritual writings, they refer to the gross body, the subtle body, and the causal body. Um, so Ganesh Baba, he he made this system called um, he referred to as the cycle of synthesis, which um, uh, shows the um, uh, creation and evolution with kind of humans being in the middle of the microcosm and macrocosm, and it has he took Vedantic philosophy. 
um, physiology, modern physics, um, evolution, and yoga and tantra, and put it all into this one 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 diagram. It's really um, it looks pretty simple on the on the you know when you look at it, um, but wow, you know I've had the the uh, great fortune of having that in the back of my mind for about 40 years now, and um, boy, you know I continue to learn things from how that's put together. Um, and it, it has been um, uh, wonderful. So he 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 splits the subtle field up into into two areas. So his 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 system is four fields instead of three. Um, the bottom two being in the space time continuum, and the top two being beyond that. And it corresponds to the chakras. And 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 if you do these practices, you really um, you really um, learn about all of that because the the meditation is really all about learning to manage your energy so mm. posture sets the stage and your breath is the power and then you start to utilize your your attention and it's a whole nother world inside kundalini which many people have heard of is only you know one aspect of it you know often that happens for people unexpectedly it can happen spontaneously it can be you know, a little challenging for some, but if you prepare for it, then it's not that that challenging piece. You know, does 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 not occur, and um, so Ganesh Baba was in favor of people who, if they did use marijuana, to um, use it and do kriya, a period, and he would teach um, deep, deep methods of concentration with 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 the. Um, uh, 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 once one also had that influence of altering their awareness through through cannabis and you know one thing that is is a little concerning for me these days is is the focus on is how psychedelics are being used so cannabis is clearly a psychedelic and one that with kriya can be used to great creativity and mm -hmm. and you can develop great insight <clears throat> now it's not to be used you know, regularly or every day or anything, and using, you know, smoking anything is not great for your lungs from a physical mm -hmm. standpoint, right? And so, um, and uh, uh, orally ingesting it is hard to dose for people. But if somebody does does already use that substance, it is something to utilize in a different way because it it does accelerate um, uh, the process of 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 meditative states. Now psychedelics. So what what people think more traditionally of psychedelics, LSD, peyote, um, 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 uh, mushrooms, ayahuasca, um, you know, those are different. You know, those do sh shed incredible um, uh, light on viewing reality differently. And people do have um, wonderful experiences, but then they also have fairly terrifying experiences mm -hmm. and I can tell you that growing up in the 60s and 70s um, in New York City I saw some pretty awful things for people and people oh, yeah. were left really 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 struggling and of course there's been progress made with set and setting when you go into what is now referred to as journeys but still um, you know it can be challenging and then as a physician and particularly in psychiatry I would see casualties that, you know, would really change people's lives. Now, were they predisposed to a psychotic illness? You know, probably. But, you know, it could bring something on early. It can really be quite, quite challenging. So they are, they are substances to be looked at as a sacrament and, and not just willy-nilly, willy-nilly use. Um, you know, I'm a little concerned that now there seems to be kind of like a someone starts chasing the psychedelic experiences oh well i've tried this and i need to try this and i need to do it every week or three times a week or you know there's so it is quite challenging and then there's ketamine which is you know a little more of um an anesthetic um so it has different qualities it also influences the autonomic nervous system a little differently there's a little more push on the sympathetic side instead of the parasympathetic side so it can be a little um, much for people, but the wonderful thing is it only lasts for an hour. You know, it's not like um, a psilocybin, which is six hours, or LSD, which can be, you know, a dozen hours or more. So 
um, so I'm not I'm not um, saying that um, uh, psychedelics um, I, I do not think that they should be in the same category <clears throat> as the other drugs of abuse I mean heroin and methamphetamine are not psychedelics those, <laughs> that's for sure those, right 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 and psychedelics <clears throat> you know um, uh, are natural substances that humanity has used forever. Very few people get in trouble in trouble with them, but they do have to be respected. And if they're respected from the standpoint of a sacrament, yes, you get you know a lot more, a lot more out of it. Now that said, and the very important thing that I think is 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 being missed uh, for people is, it is that if you have those psychedelic experiences. And then you, marijuana can be used to reach those same states. Uh, and, and I should say first that there is no psychedelic state that you cannot just reach through meditation. Mm -hmm. e e everything is accessible in exactly the same way. Um, what psychedelics and marijuana can do, um, ca cannabis, what, ca what it can do is it... it it can kind of show you where what's what's available and where you can go. Mm -hmm. Good point. And so you you've kind of been there already. So then you kind of can navigate the path a little a little easier, and and then that becomes something you can just do on the spot with your breath mm -hmm. instantaneously, regardless of what's going on. Well, I think that's a really important perspective. Um, I, uh, I think it was last summer. Um, I I did a like a four day solo meditation retreat, just shamatha practice, just silent sitting, you know, follow the mm -hmm. breath kind of idea. Sure. And on the final day, uh, in the evening, I had a couple of puffs of cannabis, and you know, I didn't get super high. But I had an interesting little insight at the time, which was that I just, it sort of felt like this is just the same as what I've been doing for the last four days. You know, it's not about, you know, all the bells and whistles and glory and lights and all that. And the same, I think, applies to psychedelics. It's uh, uh, when, in my understanding anyway, when cannabis is used properly or at it, you know, optimally, uh, that it's, uh, it's, it's a reality medicine. It just, deepens you know your connection a little bit yes and and also it's much more creative than what what are thought of as the traditional you know psychedelics the the ones mm. the, the plants that are ingested <clears throat> for journeys because those and of course you know they all vary a little bit but pretty much you know you step on there and if you if you're taking a psychedelic dose versus what's referred to as a psycholytic dose and we can talk about that if you want um uh, wow, you know, you're really, I mean, you, you've, you've gotten in and, and you're on a trajectory and there's really not much, you know, for you to, you know, you're, you're the observer, right? You're, 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 you're the observer there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cannabis does not work that way, but you can reach the same spots, of, like you said, of lights and visions and all of that. And at, coupled with with uh, all coupled with with meditation and so that was um and so so ganesh baba was um you know very interested in having the population spiritualized so to speak spiritualization mm -hmm. because because we are missing the mark so we are missing the mark we are not in balance and nature is going to rebalance herself in fact, he would say that the so if you if you think of um, uh, uh, nature, spirit, and the absolute a, as the Trinity, so there's you know there's different ways there's the, that 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 has been described in all 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 religions have you know some type of focus on that. Um, uh, it is it is he would say it is through the mother that you can find the father, and so mm. who's the mother? Beautiful, but, but nature, and and you know who's the father? Well, it's spirit, and so we are here. So it is only through the mother, through through mother nature, that we can really reach spirit and have that integration to then experience the non-duality of of that unification. 
And you know, there's a lot of work with the spine in, in, in Kriya and Tantra and um, uh, different exercises you can do. In fact, Yogananda has a, a quote I just, I just really love. He, he talks about the brain and the spinal cord being the altars of God. Mm. And, you know, <clears throat> it's endless exploration endless exploration and deeper and deeper and it's not just one experience all your chakras can be experienced in different ways different aspects of your central nervous system your brain can be experienced in different ways and you learn to modulate you know all, all, all of that and um, and to help others right so once once you experience those states you know it's um, you know it's a wonderful thing and, and you can share it with others now that said it's you know it is it can be challenging work because you have to practice 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 mm. because that is it's just like anything else you know you 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 know you want to um you want to learn a new sport you know let's say you know you're going to play baseball and so you have to learn to pitch to catch the rules how to slide, how to hit the ball, how to, you know, all, all of that. And so you practice all these things. Then you get out there and you can play the game. Mm -hmm. And so this I, is no different. Yeah, okay. So I have a question about that, actually. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, because you've been working in that area in a variety of ways for a very long time. Uh, I'm wondering if you have seen, let me see, let me try to put this a little bit in perspective. Uh, my old Buddhist teacher, Chugyam Trungpa, um, uh, criticized what he called, his. this was his version of describing the what he called the arhat mentality, which was, you know, essentially uh, enlightenment for oneself or self-enlightenment or something like that. And so is it, I mean, such, you've described a lot of detail in these practices, and I'm wondering, have you seen people, or is it a common enough problem to warrant even mentioning of people getting a little too self-involved with all that and not stepping out into the uh, you know serving aspect of things sure that's very very interesting so that that is one difference um, that is one main difference I think between um, uh, yogic and Buddhist meditation in general much of Buddhist meditation it, it, it evolved around monasteries um, and yogic was was a little more mixed and and actually Kriya yoga very specifically is you know the 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 um, uh, the direction uh, from some of the uh, people further back in the lineage were you know no ashrams no brick and mortar places in fact the more brick and mortar that's around the spiritual tradition the more rigid, brittle, uh, old, and stale it gets. <laughs> that could happen for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, so, um, uh, but, but it's all based on it's all based on real experiences, right? Every, mm -hmm. and, and no, you cannot you cannot have deep spiritual experiences and become focused within that 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 just does not that is not how we experience those deeper states mm. what are those deeper states what what really what ultimately is it is it all it is just love in a the broadest most expansive way that you know we can imagine it is it is pervasive and that that compassion um uh, uh fills you and 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 changes your life yes you can become over focused on different practices and mm -hmm. isolate and become you know rigid and um uh, inflexible um but if you're making progress with mm. with with the spiritual practice as opposed to just getting over focused with the details no that won't that that will not happen then and that's why i refer to it as creative integration and that each of these practices are um you know they're they're just wonderful i mean they're 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 just one and as you get deeper into them um you you continue to learn things and and oh, our our conscious awareness has has all kinds of um levels to it really right? from taking anesthesia where you're you know pretty unresponsive to uh, uh deep sleep and rem sleep to waking consciousness then to um uh deep states of relaxation to contemplation to meditation and to transcendence and those are all 
you know, all different. And, and this is no, so, so everyone learned how to go to sleep when they were a baby. <laughs> a learning to meditate is no different. You are just learning to enter a different state of awareness and consciousness. Mm -hmm. It just takes practice. And it's, 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 it's an emergent property. So once you start to play with these different parts, particularly as outlined in Patanjali's Yoga Sutras or the way Ganesh Baba taught Kriya, um, yeah, you, you, you move that way. And the different parts of your brain begin to interact in new ways. And so, the, you know, the, the, the sum is much more than, than you know, the, the, uh, the outcome is much greater than the sum of the parts. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's, a, it's a whole nother um, uh, realm. And you move into um, being able to then experience subtle energies that, um, you know, people feel here and there. Um, I, 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 I spent a lot of time connecting with nature when I was young. Um, even though I, I, I lived in um, New York City and lived in every, every borough except Staten Island, I was always finding the parks, you know, or, you know, the river or uh, uh, spending time and then quickly began to explore New England um, uh, uh, once I could. And I went to, you know, pretty, pretty remote places, you know, whatever I could get to on foot or with, with, with the help in those days of... Uh, a cardboard sign and um, your thumb um, <laughs> you could you know get 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 around and and bathing yourself in nature is just is 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 tremendous mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it adds it adds tremendous value to the whole yeah the I, whole I find I find cannabis and uh, quote unquote nature to be very simpatico um, uh, sort of extending this nature concept a little further, we were talking beforehand uh, about the um, in indigenous lesson, lessons from indigenous communities and so on uh, associated with, you know, where we are now, where we need to go and all that. Uh, and you, I think you have a number of um, thoughts about that. Can you elaborate in that direction? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I think we'd be hard pressed uh, to find a a a a indigenous group that did not experiment with psychedelic substances on some level because the plant world is filled with it um and you know people were exploring it there was no safe way then right you would go to you needed something to eat you know you you you, you had to find it where you were and so so the knowledge base was 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 greater and um, most indigenous practices that i'm aware of have a tremendous focus on nature right they're they're um, that is part of the ritual. Um, it's, um, it's interesting that, you know, some of the nature focused, um, practices are referred to at least, you know, 50 years ago, who used to be referred to in a more of a derogatory fashion. Oh, that's pagan rituals. Well, wow. You know, it is, it is, they were paying attention to the cycles of mother nature, which mm -hmm. is, 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 is how we're alive. We are completely devoid from connection with those cycles you know paying attention to the sun just the sun getting up every day at the same time very regulating we in the modern world are extremely dysregulated electronics mm. are really dysregulating um uh people and we are losing the connection with our essence and and so nature is a great way um to connect with that and so any 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 indigenous group has something to teach us to re-educate us and the thing is it's it's it was in all of our heritages right so so no matter you know where you're from i happen to have a lot of different makeup in my background so um it's it's interesting to, for me to explore um some of those but it's balance it's all about balance and so what is natural and what's not natural well you know, from this perspective, sitting right here, it's all natural. All the garbage, all the nuclear waste, all of that, it's natural. What's, what's, what's the problem? The problem is, you know, that, that it's been manipulated in a way that it's out of balance. Mm -hmm. So uranium underneath the ground, it's, you know, humans have been living above it forever. It's not a problem. Concentrating it, bringing it above ground, having a nuclear plant meltdown and then having it go into the air well that's a problem it's out of balance then 
Mm -hmm. um, and so it's with everything, you know, what, what we're doing with, you know, with uh, fossil fuels and, and air travel and, you know, all, all of that. So it's balance, balance, balance. Nature will, you know, correct that. Nature just keeps moving back to balance. And you're seeing that. This is climate change. Well, you know, of course it's climate change. The planet has gone through, the planet is going through co constant climate change. It has periods of time where there's not a lot of change, but, you know, as one system, you know, gets a little more um, vigorous than another, there's, there's a compensatory mechanism. And humans can choose to tune into that and help be part of that balance, or they can choose to, you know, continue to march blindly as the lemmings do to the, you know, edge of the cliff. Um, uh, and, you know, the planet's going to go on. But so what are we? So clearly, clearly there's been, we've seen this, this has been uh, uh, clear to many people for, you know, a long time. I mean, in, 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 in the 40s, people were getting, you know, sort of it's 80 years now that we're, you know, kind of seeing that, you know, this was going to have an end point to it. Um, and you know, nothing, right? No, nothing, nothing's, nothing's changed. Um, uh, people are maybe a little more aware, but, but, but nothing's changed. So, um, seeing what you can do, um, all we can do is, is, is work on ourselves. Mm -hmm. All we can do is work on ourselves. All we can do is, is have a practice to help regulate yourself each day reconnect with 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 nature as much as you can and and breath is really the most powerful way one one very well-known um, uh, Kriya Yogi Hari Harinanda says breath control is mind control hmm. and it's very 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 um, true the breath is hugely powerful it's you know it and it's prana that's prana chi our life energy mm -hmm. and so how do you learn to modify that how do you play with it what can you do with it um mm -hmm. and and there's no need for you know for psychedelics for this now you can mm -hmm. now psychedelics i think can be can be utilized i i'm i i certainly um uh, think they have a place absolutely there's no question. And now, you know, they're finding particular, you know, it works particularly well with PTSD, with some depression, but it doesn't work for any, everybody. It's not a panacea. And plenty of people go through that and, and still, with, with emphasis on set and settings, have very difficult experiences. Mm -hmm. um, so um, lower doses um, sometimes help work with... Um, more you know psychological issues the unconscious it's interesting that's the psycholytic aspect of of psychedelic psychotherapy um but you know to take a whole day to do that is is a lot for people so you know psilocybin you know six hours that's a whole day um people need to be driven there and home and 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 and, and um uh you know all, all of that um so that's where ketamine has a benefit, but it, you still have to be driven, but it's much shorter. But it's, um, that can't be used really. There's challenges with using ketamine on a chronic basis. Mm. Um, it has its own kind of um, negative effects on the body that, that, mm. that, that, can, that can show up. So, um, uh, well, that's one thing about some you know, of the natural ones like psilocybin peyote and ayahuasca is that uh, they don't seem to have any uh, deleterious physical effects uh, with long-term use in particular. Uh, you know, obviously we're talking about uh, uh, encouraging people to use them, you know, in optimal ways. Um, so um, uh, you, uh, <clears throat> in, in the notes that we've shared, uh, you talked a little bit about psychedelic psychotherapy and things like, you know, cautions and precautions issues of harm reduction things like that can you elaborate a little bit on 
you know, let, let's say you were speaking to people or people are watching or listening to this that are perhaps training to do that kind of work themselves. It's certainly exploding rapidly these days or are interested even in um, finding someone to be a psychedelic guide for them. Can you elaborate a little on sort of the you know best practices, worst practices or things you think are important for people to know about all that? Well, I think <clears throat> that um, if you are... Um, well, it, Oregon is uh, where where I'm where I live is um, on track for psilocybin to be utilized clinically, um, beginning um, in about six months. So, it's I mean it's been done in Holland and um, uh, and we're the first um, uh, state in the country um, to do that. So there's a lot of challenges going on with that, and how do you who can be a guide and what can be available and all, all the typical politics have entered in. It's a little bit of challenging and, um, but you really want someone who knows what they're doing. And, and, um, and so this is challenging because if you're doing it for a, um, a condition you're struggling with, you know, like depression or PTSD, wow, you really need to be with somebody who who knows that land knows that territory but also knows the psychedelic land well um as well as as well as the 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 non-psychedelic way to engage these transcendental states because co-regulation is a very important part so what is co-regulation and it's I, I really don't think that is stressed enough in the somatic, even in some of the somatic therapy trainings. Um, how, how do you regulate yourself? Like that, to me, that has to be um, the first thing that you demonstrate, that you can manage in stressful situations to manage your own state. Um, then you can first work with somebody else. So you want somebody who's very well grounded, who's 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 not lost, who's not getting lost with all the glitter about this, uh, you know, and all the hype. You want somebody who's very solid, very grounded, who can be there with you, you know, throughout. And then somebody to help you explore your experience and integrate it then in, in, into your life. Um, and that's important too. And so so people need to have done their work already, not just be trained in, oh, if this happens, I call 911. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, you, you need to, and so, um, so from my perspective, you need an excellent therapist who mm. has done their own work, um, but their own body mind work also. They're not just wedded to one particular psychotherapeutic mm -hmm. technique. You know that that is that is um, missing the whole. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very important to be there um, uh, completely for somebody and to um, for energetically for it to be you know uh, uh, a good mix. Mm -hmm. And people yep. should not be doing it by them. People are getting ketamine in the mail now, mm. and like you know doing it like this with some. I mean I I I just you know I. Um, you know, I just don't, 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 don't quite understand that. You, you, yeah. you it's, 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 um, it's a shame. It's and all these substances, yeah, you know, all these substances right. are available that way. 5-MeO, DMT and so on. You can get, you know, online and such like that. Um, you know, I just, uh, a little bit more on ketamine, if you don't mind, uh, um, a couple of questions about that, because, you know, you talk, you just spoke quite eloquently, um, uh, about, the need for uh, you know the right kind of guidance in doing this uh, one of the knocks against the, the development of work in ketamine that I've heard a couple of times is that in the United States in particular um, because it's legal uh, any doctor uh, and perhaps other people with medical training are allowed to use it but there's no um, uh, requirement whatsoever that that person have the other kinds of training with you know uh, deep non-ordinary states or right. any of that kind of thing so there's this kind of 
you know, uh, question up in the air these days that, you know, are people that really shouldn't be doing this doing that because doing it because they can and because they can make money from it well yeah i'm sure there are some people out there are some people doing that yes it uh -huh. seems it seems that that's the case but people are also using it for other things and it's used in pain and it's but of there course. isn't necessarily you know a psychological component um uh incorporated into some of those practices um you know so it depends what you're going for right so um uh, you know, if the person's trained in what you're interested in, you know, working on, then, you know, I think, I think, um, you know, that is fine. But it, um, uh, you just have to be careful, you know, of, of, you know, what, what you do and talk to people's experience and spend time with the person. I mean, connect with the person in the studies, um, uh, certainly the studies done at Hopkins, um, if you, you, you know, talking to, um, Bill Richards, who who I've gotten to know, um, you know, he 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 thought that you know eight sessions were ideal to get to know somebody before moving into a psychedelic mm. experience. Um, I think often b due to limitations in study funding, I think you know there might have been four sessions, but um, he saw value in in um, uh, in eight sessions. And these states bring up plenty of stuff. So and so can just meditation. I did want to touch on that before. So even just so no substances, right? And and just to be clear, Kriya Yoga by itself, yogic meditation is an accelerated path, period, with or without substances. Mm -hmm. Right? So so absolutely. Um but you know, when you start to get in touch with, you know, deep feelings and your and yourself and just just the experience of, of a deep sense of recognition or connection can bring up pretty strong emotions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, plenty of people can get tearful and, you know, um uh and it's a process to work through. So it is there is a lot of um uh healing work associated associated with this. Um and, you know, PTSD is, I mean, it's great that they're showing good efficacy with MDMA with, with PTSD. You know, that, that certainly does, does make sense to me. For me, um, I, I use auricular acupuncture for PTSD. Um, mm. And um, so it's just ear acupuncture. And um, there were a group of medical acupuncturists that developed... Um, a technique at the Helms Institute. Boy, I think they published on it probably over 10 years ago. So I've been using it about half a dozen years now. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't even take a trauma history from somebody anymore without putting needles in their ears if they're amenable to it, because I think it's just, mm -hmm. it's just, um, it's traumatizing and having the needles in can be um, remarkably healing. Um, and um, I've seen incredible, um, uh, uh, healing for PTSD. And that is something, you know, would be great if it got out there. I mean, psychiatrists sh should be trained in, um, in, in auricular acupuncture. I think it should be in, 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 um, in everybody's practice. And it's a tremendous adjunct to psychotherapy, kind of like EMDR in a way, if you've, if you've heard of that, but, but, but I've heard of it. Much, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. yeah, but much, much, much more effective and stronger. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I've seen just remarkable results with it. I mean, people turning around with one treatment. Um, wow. So it's yeah. So it's um. So That's there's all. Good. So what are you working with? You're working with the autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. You know. So you're. You know when you when you when you. So memories are not. Um, you know, encased in stone. Mem memories, memories are plastic. Our brain is plastic, meaning mm -hmm. our experiences change. That's what memory is. A memory is we're getting physical changes in our neurons, and you know, then it's then it's kind of there. Um, uh, and so, when you um, so if you like go to your linen closet and you take take a sheet out, you're gonna you know change the sheets on your bed. You take a sheet out. You're like, oh. Oh, it's summer. There's a flannel sheet. I don't want it. You know, you fold it right back up. You put it right back on the same shelf. Well, it's still a flannel sheet and it's still on that shelf, but it's not folded exactly the same way as when you pulled it out. Hmm. And every time you access a memory, something like that happens to one degree or another. Hmm. So 
so pulling memories out um, uh, that are, you know, very, very traumatizing and having your central nervous system in a different state when that happens allows you to talk about that trauma in a relaxed state and the memory goes back and it's folded in a much less traumatic um, situation and it has much, much, um, it's much, then you can, you know, um, uh, tolerate it, you know, a lot, a lot better. So there's a lot, so state, the state you're in is very, very, very important. And, and, and meditation, yogic meditation really helps you learn how to um, have control over your states and it's it's um, all meditation practices do that to some degree it's just yogic meditation is very active so um, it's not it's not it's not as passive as some and that's good for the Westerner who's very very busy and mind needs to be occupied hmm. so yes you can go and sit in a monastery for 10 years hmm. you know but 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 you know, you're waiting for it to come to you then. Mm-hmm. And with yogic meditation, you can kind of push it forward. So Buddha, you know, he was born into a yogic culture. And, you know, it's interesting, you know, B- Buddhist meditation, they focus on posture and breath. The Zen, the, the Zen folks are, are, are the Zen and Kriya have a lot of overlaps. Um, uh, they're, they're, um, uh, they're, they're very similar in a lot of ways. But, um, uh, but so so what most mo- most Buddhist meditation that's available in the West, particularly you know in the 70s and 80s, it wasn't much of an embodied practice as Kriya is. Kriya is a very much embodied practice. So they would say, you know, sit comfortably and you know pay attention to your breath. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at statues of the Buddha, and we all all used to seeing those statues from the front. You know, look at them from the side. The posture is immaculately straight, just divine, divinely straight posture. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, Buddha clearly knew, um, you know, what what he was doing, and 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 the art that developed around him, you know, showed that showed that. So. You know, a posture is so important for a number of reasons. First of all, there's all kinds of reasons for your central nervous system. So you're decreasing the static, so you can able to tune in better. But you're also allowing your respiratory system to work fully because if you're hunched forward, mm-hmm. your 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 ribs are collapsed, so they can't expand. Your diaphragm actually connects to your lumbar spine. So if that's not you know anatomically as best as you can do. You know that's a challenge. Now, of course, you know some some people who have gone through that change where their hair starts to turn a little gray. It looks like you have that condition also. Um, uh, oh no, uh, I die it that way. Oh, you die it that yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. So, so you, you know you have to pay attention to the body, right? Oh you, yeah. You know, right. No, you know you don't want to you don't want to hurt yourself, but you know, but um, but yeah, people, you know, twenty year olds, they need to they need to start to practice. You know, they need mm-hmm. to keep their their body, and you know. 30 year olds, 40 year olds, what you can do. So, so develop your strength, develop your flexibility. Um, yeah, well, I think that's all really excellent advice. I hope people that uh, watch this and are, or, and or are listening to this uh, take, take it to heart, uh, Keith. So I think that's a, a nice uplifting place to conclude our interview. Um, uh, you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good. It's a great, great opportunity. You know, I, I enjoy speaking with you. Yeah, like uh, thanks very much for sharing what you've shared, and I think a lot of really potentially valuable information there. And you know, as you mentioned earlier in the conversation, experience based, right? That's the that's the source. Um, um, so uh, before we go, though, I just want to ask you: Is there anything I can put little tiles in under these things to uh, direct people? Uh, is there any place you would like anyone watching or listening to this to uh, go, like a website or something else that oh, they can yeah. take a look I- at? I have a Korea website. It is it is um, uh, www. dot Korea Breath. K R I Y A Korea Breath. dot com. Okay, and, perfect. Um, you know that there's a page there with about the book I I wrote, and I do teach Korea online, or if people are local, mm-hmm. I I do teach people you know in person. Excellent. Um, 
And so all the information is there on the website? Yep, absolutely. Including information for the book, if anyone's interested? Yep, there's a book page there. Yeah, yep. yep, and the book title there. again is called? Um, it's, 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 it's Kriya Yoga, it, um, and um, it focuses on deep states of meditation. So, so Kriya Yoga um, and self-discovery and practices for deep states of meditation. Excellent. Yeah. And for those listening who aren't necessarily seeing this written down, Keith's last name is spelled L-O-W-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. -E I believe I got that right. Um, yes, yes, yeah. you did. Yes, okay. yes. And, and for, those, for those interested in, you know, Ganesh Baba, um, there's another book written, by, written about him more. Um, mm. called called the crazy wisdom of Ganesh Baba. Oh yeah, he's um, a fascinating character. Yes, uh, yes, I didn't even know he was still around. Um, well, so he's that's... not. He's he's not. He passed away in the in in eighty seven. Oh okay. Yeah. I thought you said something about eighty seven year old. I thought you were implying he was still. Well, around. he was yeah. no. I I he pa he when I met him he was eighty seven and he, ah. he was ninety two when he passed. I see. Or, or yeah. maybe ninety four when he passed. Right. And um. Uh, but no, he, um, uh, yeah, that is, that is, um, uh, and it's he, it's he who actually had me become a physician. He yeah, said wonderful. after I was, you know, doing Korea with him for a year, it's kind of time now for you to go to a medical school. So. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Okay, well, let's, um, let's conclude it there. And uh, beyond that, I just want to say thanks very much. Thank you so much. And thanks for the work you're doing. Thank you.